Hello and welcome to this look at um, how to carry out an aspirin tablet determination. I'm going to use the back titration technique um, and two methods are possible in terms of the actual reaction you can undergo with aspirin. So back titrations are used basically when direct titration between your acid and your base is not possible. Normally this occurs when the substance being titrated, whether it's the acid or the base, is not very soluble in water. So it involves reacting the substance to create a more soluble product, which can then be titrated directly. So you work back using mole ratios and stoichiometry to calculate the quantity of the original substance that was present. As you do so, you must account for any side reactions that might take place during the practical procedure that might affect the moles being titrated. So if we take the structure of aspirin, obviously you've got a carboxylic acid group up there that's circled in blue. And this will partially release hydrogen ions. But the problem we've got is the rest of the molecule doesn't really undergo hydrogen bonding very well. So the whole molecule is actually insoluble in water. So direct acid-based titration of aspirin is quite difficult and unreliable due to this issue. So how would we go about determining how much aspirin is in a tablet? Well, you take your aspirin, obviously, off the shelf of the pharmacy, doesn't matter what brand particularly that you're going to use, and you might take two or three tablets, for example, and weigh them out. You record the mass in grams, take those three tablets, and you dissolve them in a known amount of sodium hydroxide. So then you make that up to the known volume in the normal way using a volumetric flask, which is now ready to be uh, titrated. So the reason we use sodium hydroxide is the acid functional group in aspirin reacts with cold sodium hydroxide solution. And that makes a salt. So the hydrogen ion is replaced by a sodium ion. So this doesn't react with HCl, but the sodium hydroxide that was reacted was known. So whatever's left behind can be determined by titration. So by making sure we know how much sodium hydroxide we started with, titration tool will tell us how much is left and the moles of aspirin can be calculated by difference. So like I said the HCl will react with any excess NaOH left behind. The indicator changes color as the end point is reached so the average titer of the HCl can be used to work out the excess sodium hydroxide moles using the mole ratio between sodium hydroxide and HCl. So the original number of moles of sodium hydroxide take away the excess number of moles of sodium hydroxide. It must be the moles of aspirin. So how can we assume this? Well, if you look at the equation, you'll see that the salt formed in the original aspirin are equimolar. So going back to what we made up using the sodium hydroxide, the moles of HCl using the titration will not react with the aspirin salt but they, really re they will react with the sodium hydroxide left behind from the original preparation. So by working out the moles of uh, HCl that we titrated, that's going to be equal to the number of moles of sodium hydroxide in the conical flask under the burette. So the original moles of sodium hydroxide minus the number of moles that are left behind in the conical flask, like we said before, is the moles of aspirin. So you divide that number of moles by the number of tablets that you used to get the moles of aspirin per tablet. You can convert that back into a mass and compare it to the published mass per tablet on the side of the packet. So this is actually how they do quality checking. They do random titrations just to check that the amount of um, aspirin that they're putting into their tablets matches the amount they say that's in the tablet. So it's important that they publish an accurate value, otherwise the patient or the person using the aspirin might be taking too high or too small a dose. So let's look at an alternative approach using hydrolysis of the ester group. So this is the ester group that I've circled in blue. And this will react with hot sodium hydroxide, but this time it won't be an acid-base reaction, it'll be a hydrolysis reaction. So hydrolysis means the hydroxide ion or water being used to split a larger molecule into two smaller molecules. So I'll explain in a moment why I've suddenly put three in front of my sodium hydroxide. So if you look at the two products, you've got um, one product that would have been originally based on a COOH group 
up here where the H plus has been taken away and replaced by Na plus and also a phenol group which is a benzene ring with an OH directly attached which has now been replaced also with an Na plus and also ethanoic acid which would have come from this part of the molecule has also had its acidic hydrogen replaced with an Na plus so three different places have had sodium involved now So not only does the carboxylic acid group react with sodium hydroxide, but the ester group is hydrolyzed by sodium hydroxide to a carboxylate salt, which is down here, and a phenol. So the phenol goes on to behave as a weak acid. So that means the H in the OH group that's located here will also lose a hydrogen and that will be replaced by a sodium. So you need to be careful. Sodium has ended up in three places. This needs to be accounted for in your calculation of the number of moles of sodium hydroxide. So let's take a moment to just explain where the moles of sodium hydroxide go. So we need to watch out for, initially, the number of moles of sodium hydroxide that remain are equal to the number of moles of sodium hydroxide hydrochloric acid that were titrated like we looked at before and like before as well the number of moles of sodium hydroxide that have reacted and turned into products here must be the number of original moles of sodium hydroxide take away the number of moles that are now remaining so the number of moles that are reacted is used to make one mole of this substance and one mole of this substance, the carboxylate salt. So the sodium hydroxide will make both of these. So take account of this. There are now three moles of sodium hydroxide reacting, hence the three in front of the NaOH. OK, hopefully this has been a useful look at two different ways to uh, use the chemistry of aspirin to work out how much of it there is in a tablet. Until next time, thanks for listening and see you soon.